guys a little bit about myself and where I'm from. I'm from Southern California. I know that you guys know that. But the topic of what I'm going to talk today to you guys about is letting go. This first uh, slide that I have up here is a picture of my family. As you can see, I have a huge family. Um, we're very close-knit. I'm one out of 26 cousins. And we're stuck together like glue. Where one goes, the other one follows. What one does, the other one goes. The other one does. Uh, they're my support system. They're my comfort. This is where I feel comfortable. It's with them. And that's my comfort zone. This next one I have right here is a picture of the day that my fiance proposed to me and asked to marry him. That was three weeks before I moved up here. And he supported me throughout the whole entire way of applying to school. And we've been together for seven years. So throughout the whole entire journey of what I wanted to do in life, I, I had his support. He's my other half. And he's my best friend. Next one is my chiropractic family. As some of you know, Dr. Brad Wolacki is my chiropractor back at home. The first time he ever laid his hands on me with his first adjustment when I was at the fresh age of eight. And before then, I grew up as a medicine cabinet family. We were a medic medicine cabinet family. And so my mom used to always tell me, Rhea, you gotta take this medication because it's gonna make you feel better. You're gonna feel better and if you don't take it, you're not gonna be better. So she would pour the, the uh, syrup, that nasty syrup, in a cup and say, here, take it. You're not gonna, if you don't take it, you're not gonna feel better. And so I would wait until she walks away, she walks away. And I would, for some reason, take the cup and go to the bathroom. The bathroom was my, my thing to do with this cup of syrup, nasty syrup. And I'm standing there, like, all right, is mom listening to me? And then she would, uh, she would walk away, I, I can't hear anymore. And then I'd come out and be like, oh my god, mom, I need some orange juice. That stuff was so disgusting. Ugh, oh, that's so nasty. <laughs> but all along, what I would do is pour that thing down the sink. And this was at eight years old. So from that first time that I got adjusted by Dr. Brad, I felt like I had that big idea already. From the time that I was eight, up until now through that journey of trying to find myself of what I wanted to do and how I wanted to serve, I had it right there at the fresh age of eight years old. And so coming up today around this present day, um, when I realized I was coming to Life West, I was freaking happy. I was so <laughs> damn excited that back then, this was taken in October of last year, when I took my parents here and I walked into the school and it was empty. It was Saturday morning, no one was here. And I was like, oh my God, this place is freaking awesome. No one's even here, but I can feel it. I feel this love in this school already. I was happy, I was excited, I was anxious. I was anxious to meet all of you. And I was, I begged for this change inside of me because I had my comfort zone, and I had my comfort with my parents back at home and my whole entire huge family with this huge support system, this comfort, this thing called comfort. And I, was, I wanted this change so bad inside of me that I knew I could do it. So first quarter comes along, and I remember that first day of school, I parked in the back over there, walked up the stairs, and I was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take this thing down, walk in. <laughs> Go, oh man, look at all these smiles. Hey, Rhea, nice, or hey, what's your name? Nice to meet you. Hi, my name's Rhea. God, like, <laughs> that's a lot of energy. Hey, you're, you're new here. Hey, what's your name? I'm like, oh my God, what school ever does this? No school. And so I was like, man, I love it here. I'm excited about this. So many of you approached every person in our quarters saying, who are you? Where are you from? I want to know you. I want to get to know you. And weeks went by and I started digging deeper and things started to get serious and things started to get serious about school, about studying, about everything. And then it slowed down for me and I, I hit a wall. 
And I stopped and I thought, what was I doing? I was excited and all of a sudden it went complete opposite. Why was I doing this? And then I felt like I needed to ask my question about impulse. Did I act on impulse? Was it because I wanted this change so bad? Because I lived under my parents' roof for 24 years? That when I got this change, when I walked into this school, I had it. And I experienced it. But did I want it? Was it there? And so I began to worry. I worried about my family. I worried about my friends. I worried about my fiance about what he was doing. I worried about everything. And I got overwhelmed. That made me feel uncomfortable. And so I dug a little deeper and I realized that I was homesick. I missed my family. I missed that physical support because I knew they weren't going to physically be here with me to walk me through my journey of what I was used to all my life. But what it also came down to was the fact that I couldn't let go. I couldn't let go of that string that I had attached with me and my family that I was just so used to because I was sheltered in this, in this house with them all the time. And I didn't know how to take those steps. I was taking these baby steps and I thought I could finally get over, but I was stuck. And I didn't know where to go until a couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity to go to a seminar, Shubal Vision. This seminar changed me. We got to speak, we got to hear all these doctors from around the world talk about their love, their passion, their vision of why they do what they do. Man, that's what I want to do. I want to be just like them. And then I got to hear Paul and Brett and Jeannie and Addison and, and uh, Josh stand up there. And they talked about their vision of what they believed in. And they had that passion and I felt it. And I was like, you know what? They inspired me so much that I want to tell my story. And they brought me here up today. And that's the reason why that that changed me. And I realized also at, at Shubal Vision was that as chiropractors, it's not about that vertebral subluxation. It's not about that, ooh, we're doctors of the nervous system, we're gonna fix someone's nervous system. It's about life. We're about life. We're about life. And we're the only people on earth, on this planet, that can do that. We're, we have that ability to do that. And I thought that was awesome. And so, after this whole entire journey of this roller coaster, of me going up and down, of trying to find myself within, of getting away from my comfort zone, there was something that I really realized that I needed to just hold on to, was to keep that family close to you. And there's something that I always live by all the time, every day, was that sometimes, some days, you just feel like the whole entire world's walking out on you. You know who's going to be there? Your family, and they're going to walk right back in. And I was uncomfortable. I stood there behind that light that I didn't want shining in my face. But I, all, I asked you all to step out of your comfort zone. You get from here to here and step out of it and break out of that shell because you want to show the world of who you really are and what you're truly made of. Thank you.